Hello and good morning or good afternoon, whatever the case may be, in whatever time zone you are in. My name is Vince Garcia and I am the Marketing Manager with IP Datatel. I would like to welcome everyone to today's presentation. IP Datatel presents the new BAT LTE. With that, I would like to introduce you to today's presenter. Many of you know him already, Ryan McConnell. Ryan joined IP Datatel in 2009 as the company's first employee. Ryan is currently the Director of Business Development, and he has over 10 years of experience in the security industry. Ryan remains focused on regional, super regional, and national programs, and he is focused on working with dealer partners to become more efficient by reducing upfront costs and reducing unnecessary service calls all while lowering customer attrition. With that, I'll bring on Ryan. Ryan, good morning. Good morning, Vince. Thanks for having me, and uh, thank you to all of our listeners for joining uh, the webinar today. We're very excited to uh, discuss the LTE. All right, Ryan, let's go over this first slide. Let's talk about the BAT LTE, a brief introduction. Great. So uh, a little bit about the IP data television, I think, is the best way to start out. Uh, first of all, we are always focused on life safety. Um, you'll, you'll find that throughout the building here. There are a lot of folks uh, in our company and around our company that have, uh, have been in the security industry for a very long time. Um, and since we started the company, we always believed in future-proofing alarm communications uh, with IP. So we are very Internet-centric. Um, and we wanted the dealer to be flexible. really want you to put one product on your, on your truck, maybe two, but uh, one product on your truck to uh, handle all installations. So we're extremely universal. Okay, sounds good. Brian, let's move forward. Let's talk about why the BAT LTE. Well, as I said, uh, future-proofed alarm communications, something that we've always focused on. Uh, you know, back in the day, it was about a phone line with a cellular backup when I was selling um, security in the early 2000s. Um, so now uh, the Internet has really become that, that new phone line, um, and the cellular obviously still exists. Uh, so the alarm communications, that's the real heartbeat of your business. You know, when, when people see that sign in their front yard, they, they think about the security of their home um, and, and those signals getting to the central station in case of a break-in. Uh, or an emergency. Um, technology changes are constantly disrupting alarm communications as we all know. Uh, we went through the 2G uh, sunset together this past uh, couple years. And um, there's, there's really no guarantee with any cell service and, and the best way to stay ahead of that is to have a dual path communicator with internet on board um, backed up by a cellular uh, with, with the most longevity available and that's going to be your 4G LTE. Not that any of the other technologies are necessarily going anywhere, um, but this is going to be the longest uh, lasting and will be the, the technology that they continue to build on. Okay, great. I think we all remember the 2G sunset. Ryan, let's talk about the four unique features that the BAT LTE brings to the table. One. So the four unique features of the BAT LTE are simple, yet extremely important when it comes to life safety. Uh, first of all, this is the first 4G LTE dual path communicator all on one board. Uh, so internet would be your primary backed up by the LTE. Uh, if you don't want to use the internet, um, that's fine too. You can just use the LTE portion, but it is always there. Uh, second, the dual high gain antennas, as you can see in the diagram here, or the picture of the device, um, that is a, an incredible piece uh, that we added on to the board because it does give you 50% greater reception. LT is going to give you great reception. We just kind of took that extra step uh, and, and allowed for even more reception. Uh, it's truly universal. Uh, this device will work with about 95% of alarm panels that are installed in the field today. Um, we also offer full remote programming for uh, GE CADEX, Concord, uh, DSC, Power Series panels, as well as your Honeywell Vista series panels. Okay, great. Four unique features. Ryan, let's dig a little bit deeper into dual path communications. Great. So again, a future proof, uh, a future proof idea uh, concept put into this product 
um, is very, very important. Whether in a home or a business, um, having this capability uh, is really a great feature. So as you can see on the bottom right-hand corner of the uh, device, this is an actual picture of the board itself, uh, we do have a hardwired Ethernet port on board. Um, that's plug and play, and we also auto-detect that connection. So if it's there, we know it. If it's not, we know it as well. If it's not, we will move that over to the LTE communicator, uh, which you can see at the top center portion of the board, um, and that's going to be the new 4, 4G LTE chip there. Um, so really simple, auto detects, uh, and, and when one path uh, isn't enough, we've got two for you. Awesome. Future-proof dual-path communications. Ryan, now let's talk about these dual high-gain antennas. This is truly a unique feature in this industry. It, it absolutely is. Um, you know, if, if you look at the device, um, it's not much different as far as the size goes uh, compared to uh, those of you who are familiar with our BAT CDMA and BAT CDMA Wi-Fi. Um, the noticeable difference would be the antenna out to the left. Um, and that antenna replaces the need for a, uh, some sort of booster to get you a better cell signal. Uh, so really, really, really unique feature, and uh, it's kind of cool looking too. That is pretty neat. Dual high gain antennas. Okay, Ryan, let's talk a little bit more about the simple panel connectivity that you mentioned. Absolutely. So uh, all of our radios uh, that are not part of self-contained systems uh, they all power off of the panel uh, themselves. So uh, there's going to be a uh, red and a black wire that would plug into uh, this device. We pull about 130 milliamps while uh, sitting still, uh, while idle, um, although the device is always on. Um, and then at time of transmission, between 160 and 180 uh, milliamps will be drawn from the panel. Um, so, so not a whole lot, just kind of like another keypad. This device also hooks to the tip and ring, which will allow you to get signals out of the dialer. Um, there are a couple of different types of connections that you can make on this, de on this device, which means this is kind of the universal portion. Uh, for the GE Cadex, uh, Honeywell, uh, DSC, and GE Concord, um, all of these devices uh, really provide that keypad emulation. So they actually go into the keypad terminals on this device um, allowing you to see the full keypad. So if a customer has a Honeywell Vista panel, for instance, and they want to change a user code, you could actually do that remotely from your office without having to run a service call. We also provide key switch arming and disarming. Um, this is kind of a more basic, simple arm and disarm solution. Uh, it plugs into our device on one of the terminals, but it also connects to the panel uh, to an open zone. And that will allow you to, uh, through voltage change, to arm and disarm the system. Again, it's just a simple uh, connectivity offering for the customer. Uh, and just to note, uh, for remote programming, uh, we do work with Honeywell's Compass software and DLS5. There are free drivers available on the website on alarmdealer.com as you go into your portal. Uh, and you can actually send out templates to each of your systems to make the uh, programming uh, that much easier. Uh, if you don't use those programs, uh, for these three panels especially, um, you can go in and do pretty much any and all programming uh, that you could do from the physical keypad, which, which makes it, it nice not to have to run a service call every time something goes, uh, goes wrong or somebody changes the user code. Fantastic. All right, Ryan, let's talk about the interactive services that all dealers out there are looking for. Absolutely. So with a major focus on security, um, we have Secure Smart Alarm. Uh, Secure Smart Alarm can be downloaded on the App Store. Uh, you can also get that on Google Play. So Apple and Android devices are compatible. Uh, this will allow you to remotely, an arm, remotely arm and disarm your system, whether you're on key bus or whether you're on key switch. doesn't matter. You can still arm and disarm it. Obviously, if you're on key bus, you're going to get that full keypad, and you're going to want to type in the code uh, for a simple arm and disarm through key switch. Um, it's just a simple on and off button. However, either way, uh, you will receive event notifications uh, via text, uh, push, and or email. There's also an event log on the app as well. That's going to be a 90-day event log, and that event log will show you 
uh, the events by user and by zone. The panel programming can be done through the app. And most importantly, it's not about IP data sale. It's about you guys going out and selling your business um, you know, to, to the end user and really wanting them to know who you know, the security company is providing their service. Um, so we brand everything once the app is loaded um, the customer is logged in. It's all about you, you the security company, uh, no matter who you are to that customer. Extremely important, the dealer branding. Ryan, let's kind of go over all of the features for audience members out there that are taking notes about the new BAT LTE. Can you run through everything for us? Absolutely. So in addition to us sending this out and making this available to you, um, to kind of recap what we just talked about, um, the BAT LTE is, is, is the top of the line product. Everybody should be using this product. Uh, dual path alarm communications. One, uh, two is always better than one. It's a simple installation, so keep your installation times. All of our devices are pre-provisioned um, to reduce those times, uh, which makes, makes that install very, very simple. Uh, it can be used as a takeover device. You can use it to upgrade a, a new panel if you do a lot of builder business. Um, the dual high gain antenna is extremely important for coverage. The universal compa uh, panel compatibility, another great feature. You can put one of these on your, on your technician's truck and know that it will work for almost every single job you have going on. Uh, the event notifications, very important by user, by zone. Uh, there's no limit as to how many people you can notify. The remote panel programming is great for you and for the customer. It's great for you because you don't always have to run a service call and, and, and try to charge that customer or sometimes have to absorb those costs. Uh, but it's also beneficial to your customer uh, who doesn't have to take off uh, one day during the week for you to come out to do a simple service call uh, or take time away from their family on a Saturday. So again, very important. Uh, upload and download available on uh, some of the panels that we are compatible with. Uh, another great feature, you know, as, as time goes on, uh, technicians out there and users out there want everything to be made simple. Upload and download is a very simple way for us to uh, interact with that panel. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, with the app and the website, uh, the customer and you all have remote access on the go. Fantastic. And again, we've talked a little bit about this uh, on some previous slides, but can you kind of dig a little bit deeper for those folks out there that are taking notes regarding panel compatibility? Absolutely. So um, all of our panels that we're compatible with, you, you can get signals out of all the panels, uh, no matter what. Um, with some added features, such as a, a key bus connection where it's keypad emulation, um, these are going to be our fully supported panels. Uh, so it's going to be the full keypad for you. Uh, so Honeywell Vista, anything that really ends in a P would be um, would be kind of your, your go-to for those. We're also available on the first alert panels, the SafeWatch Pro panels, um, the FB, the FBP. All of those Honeywell panels that fall in there uh, around revision 2.4 and higher uh, would give you um, all the access that you would need. Uh, DSC, for instance, power series panels, your 832, your 1832, 1616, and 1864, you can get a full keypad out of that. Um, but we can still communicate on panels like the 1555, the Alexor, the Impasa, uh, and the Neo panel. Um, so those would be examples of partially supported where you could still get a simple arm and disarm and at least send signals out of the panel. Uh, and then Interlogix being the third, um, you'll get the full support out of the NX4, 6, and 8 version 2 panels. Uh, Concord 4, Concord 4 Express. Uh, we actually build a snap-in module uh, for the Simon XT and XTI. Uh, so, you know, another great uh, reflection of how flexible IP data cell is. Uh, this compatibility chart is available on our website um, as well as within this slide once you, uh, once you receive the link uh, to the presentation. Fantastic. Let's move on to the technical I know that you wanted to include this slide for uh, the technicians out there. Absolutely. So um, to kind of go over a, a small technical piece, obviously these are some questions that people always ask 
Um, so we try to address that way the technician is ready for that install. As far as the radio goes uh, and the frequencies for LTE, it runs at 700 megahertz, 1700 megahertz, and 1900 megahertz. So it really gives you some flexibility uh, on the Verizon network. Uh, in regards to power, um, it's externally provided 12 volts DC. Um, preferably, you're going to want to hook that up to uh, the panel, and then the panel should have the power hooked up to it. Uh, typical current, as I mentioned earlier, about 130 milliamps is going to be your kind of idle, always on um, pull from the panel. And then the maximum current at time of, of transmission is going to be about 160 to 180 milliamps. Environmentally, uh, the temperature range is, is pretty standard, uh, negative 30 degrees to uh, 70 degrees Celsius, so that would be up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, humidity, we're from the land of humidity down here in Houston, uh, <laughs> zero to 95 percent uh, non-condensing. So uh, very, very, very flexible uh, product, really shouldn't have any, any issues uh, unless you're, you're uh, you're in an area that, that just has extreme temperatures. Uh, the physical attributes um, of, the, uh, of the product, it's going to have a height of 7.05 inches, a width of 4.45 inches, and a depth of 1.5 inches. So uh, we don't waste space. Um, you don't have a big clunky uh, object on your wall uh, or inside, the, uh, inside a closet where the alarm can is located. Uh, very slick and uh, and good looking product on the wall. Okay, fantastic. That ought to get our techs out in the audience started. Now, Ryan, I know a lot of our audience members are already doing business with IP Datatel, but for those folks that are new to IP Datatel, talk about what it's like to work with us. Well, first of all, we have we have an awesome team. Um, that that that's key. You know, you always talk about people, process, and product. Um, you know, if you look at our people, our, our people are our greatest strength. Uh, we have an awesome sales team. Uh, we have just expanded that sales team uh, across the nation. Uh, so in almost every single region of at least the United States, uh, you will have a, a, a form of local representation. Our technical support is based here in the office, uh, which makes it easy for us to uh, chat with engineering and to manage that process as well. Um, all of them are very skilled and very trained on all the products. Um, if you look at the process in which we do things, our ticketing systems, our follow-up, uh, are very, very, very strong. We don't want the customer to just be a number, but a true partner. Um, and then as far as the products go, that kind of speaks for itself, and that, that leads to why choose IP Datatel. So reliable alarm communications, universal panel compatibility, a simple, simple installation. Uh, provide interactive services while increasing your RMR. That also helps to lower attrition. Uh, we're graduating into the smart devices um, as we move on with the uh, Secure Smart Helix panel. Uh, and then uh, kind of to round out everything, uh, you know, our goal is to have you reduce your truck rolls and to increase your activations. Uh, so definitely some keys uh, that make IP data feel different. Fantastic. Great reasons. And Ryan, how can our audience members learn more? So, you know, the greatest thing uh, is, is the website. The website has anything and everything you can need, all the product information, panel compatibility, technical installation documents, uh, link to our YouTube channel for webinars and for training videos. Uh, you can sign up as a dealer. Uh, if it's during the week, uh, during business hours, uh, we get back to you very quickly. Uh, that sales team is here from 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, Central Time. Um, and of course, you have your, your local folks um, that can help you get started as well. Uh, for immediate contact questions, um, don't, feel, don't, don't hesitate to, uh, to call us. The number is 866-896-2944. Uh, extension 1 is going to be your sales line, and extension 3 would be your technical support line. Um, you can also email us at sales at ipdatatel.com with any questions that you might have. Um, our salespeople are very, very knowledgeable, uh, and we'll get answers for you very quickly. Fantastic. Just to recap, to learn more, you can visit our website at www.ipdatatel.com. On our website, you can find product information such as the product sheet for the BAT LTE, 
panel compatibility chart. As Ryan mentioned, all the technical documents for installation, uh, the BAT LTE manual, the quick start guide, links to our YouTube channel with our videos and our webinars. Uh, reach out to sales via email at sales at ipdatatel.com. Uh, here locally in the Houston metro area, 713-452-2700. Outside Houston metro, 866-896-2944. Hit extension 1 for sales. Hit extension 3 for technical support. Ryan, I am looking down at the board right now, and we have a pretty full board of calls. What do you say we get right into those right now? Absolutely. All right. Uh, Ryan, first, let's go to Steve in Los Angeles. Steve asks, Ryan, can you discuss 4G LTE and what implications this cellular technology could have on future sunsets? All right, Steve, let's, let's start out with uh, that question. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, LTE and its implications uh, on future sunsets, um, you know, we don't know. Uh, the, the, the great piece about cellular communications um, is, is the ease of install. Um, the uptime is, is extremely, uh, extremely good. Um, but we don't have any control as a manufacturer, uh, and really uh, the providers themselves just have little control. It's just as things evolve, new technologies evolve. Um, we've gone from 2G to, uh, to 3G. Uh, we've, we have CDMA products that are still available right now. Um, no real concerns there uh, in the immediate future, but you know we don't know what's going to happen with anything. We don't know what's going to happen with LTE 10, 15, 20 years down the line. Um, but as a provider, no matter what company, we all have to keep up with the latest and greatest uh, cellular technology. So I don't really know. Uh, but the answer to your question is, with this bad LTE, as we discussed, uh, the IP connectivity uh, on the product is extremely critical because now it's not on your customer's time, it's on your time. So if, if some sort of technology sunset, um, at least you have the internet connection there um, to keep your customer uh, monitored, keep that system going, keep them notified. Um, so that kind of sums up the whole LTE e, uh, webinar today. So thank you for your question, Steve. I hope that, hope that answers it. There you go, Steve, the latest in cellular technology, 4G LTE. Uh, moving down the board, Ryan, I have Robert in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Robert says, can you discuss the dual high gain antenna setup? I've never seen this configuration on an alarm communicator before, so what does it actually do for the reception? Good question, Robert. Yeah, uh, awesome question, Robert. Uh, it would be the first. Um, it is the first. Um, that, that design uh, was well thought out. Uh, it involved several people within our organization from the president down to uh, logistics with uh, finding the right, the right box and the right way to ship that, that product. Um, so everybody has been involved in this. And one of the things that, that we've realized is with Verizon, your need for a long-range uh, extender uh, is, is really not all that necessary in 99% in of areas. Um, with LTE, this just gives you that, that extra guarantee that, that you're going to get the cellular reception that you need. Um, so it increases it by about 50% um, or more in some cases. Um, and we, like I said, we focus on life safety and we feel that it's just one more, one more piece to add uh, that really drives home that point. Fantastic. There you go, Robert. Uh, Butch in Dallas, he asks a lot of questions on our webinars. Uh, Butch asks, uh, I know you mentioned universal compatibility. Can you discuss this further? Also, does the BAT LTE work with Concord? Ryan. Yes, Butch, thank you for uh, being an active participant uh, every time we have one of these. That, that means a lot to see, uh, see some folks that, that participate on a, on a monthly basis. And uh, it's also nice to see some new names. So to get to your question, um, yes, to discuss further, our panel compatibility is available on the website. Um, and I guess where you were really going with that is does the BAT LTE work with uh, Concord? And um, the answer is yes. Um, we have finalized our testing and our final certification through Verizon. Uh, we'll be releasing this product on August 1st. 
we should have that out to um, out to distribution uh, here shortly. Uh, and that panel compatibility with the Concord is, is going to be just like it was on Honeywell DSC and the GE Networks version panels, uh, where you will get that full keypad emulation, the ability to remotely program as well. Fantastic. I know there's a lot of anticipation for Concord out there. Oh, yes. Thanks, Butch. Uh, moving down the line, Jimmy in New York City asks, how difficult is it to set up interactive services how can this really save my business time and money, like you mentioned? Yeah, so as far as the interactive services go, um, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, this product is going to be six wires. You've got power, um, obviously, to get, uh, to get some power out of the product. Um, you've got a tip and ring connection for your signals. And then you just hook us up like a regular keypad um, as well. So as far as the interactive services goes, once all that is done, um, it's, it's going to automatically populate the interactive services. When you register the device, the MAC address of the device, you have to set up a customer account, as, uh, as most of you know, and you give them a username and password. It's as simple as passing that username and password to the customer and having them download the app. Um, so very easy to set up the interactive services. As far as uh, how can it save your business time and money, um, the installation is extremely short. Uh, with hooking up this device, this is a less than 10 minute install uh, on the device with a couple of programming steps and a couple of wires to add. You know, I think probably the wiring is going to take you uh, the most time and that's just a few minutes as we know. Uh, so, so there's one. Um, the other part of the time and money uh, piece is the remote programming features. So to be able to not run a truck and fix the, fix the, the system or uh, adjust the system for the, the customer uh, is going to save you time and money. You know, those, those trucks, just because uh, you're, you're charging the customer, we know that the second that truck hits the, hits the street, uh, it's, it's going to start costing you money in some way, shape, or form, whether it be wear and tear or the customer doesn't want to pay, and, and you're kind of stuck with that. Uh, so hope that answers your question, Jimmy. There you go, Jimmy. Hope that gets you started. Uh, got another one. This one coming in from Louisiana. Boudreaux in Louisiana asks, uh, Ryan, I have a few questions. Where can I get the bad LTE? Is installing one much different than installing your other communicators? And finally, what do I do if I have any issues with this new product? What do you say, Ryan? All right, Boudreaux, thank you very much. Um, where can you get a bad LTE? Uh, all of our distri distribution partners, uh, our low voltage distributors, the places you're currently purchasing the product, um, Anybody in, in the security industry that, that carries products most likely carries IP data tell. Um, is installing one much different than installing your other communicators? It's exactly the same. Uh, we, we kept it very simple. Um, so no, it'll be the same as the BAT CDMA, same as the BAT CDMA Wi-Fi as far as uh, registering and programming the panel. Um, and then what do you do if you have any issues with this new product? Uh, well, one thing that, that we've always improved on and, and always uh, taken very seriously is our testing. You know, I talked about people, product, and process earlier, and this is part of the process. Uh, one, we have an extremely extensive uh, process that we perform here in the office. Uh, we literally try to break the product in every way, shape, or form. Um, so, so that's a, a very big piece. Uh, that product has to be almost perfect before we send it out to customers. Uh, and partners for beta testing. That beta testing process has been about uh, 90 days of um, just rigorous uh, testing, finding out any quirks that the, that the product has. Um, so we've gone through that. That comes back to us. For about another 30 to 45 days, we're reviewing uh, with engineering, fixing these little things. This is obviously all pre-production. Um, once that's done and we've sent it back out, for a thumbs up, it goes through a Verizon certification, connecting to the network. Uh, things like that uh, will be on that product. So the process for uh, this, this product really in particular um, just continues to get better and better. Uh, you, you really shouldn't have any, any issues. Uh, we can never say never with technology, um, but I, I think the, the past three products that we've released have really proven themselves in the field. Um, you know, if you do have 
by chance get a bad one, take it back to distribution and they'll they'll swap it out for you. Um, but but our uh, our failure rate is, is extremely low. Fantastic, Boudreaux. Hope that helps you out, Ryan. I know that time is short today, so with that we're going to cut it short. Uh, I'll give out the contact information one more time. Uh, sales at ipdatatel.com via email. 713-452-2700 in Houston, 866-896-2944 outside of Houston Metro. Ryan, thanks for being here. Everybody else, thank you so much for joining us. Ryan, do you have anything to close with? I just want to uh, tell everyone thank you very much again for uh, for joining the webinar. Um, definitely. Get your hands on a bad LT as soon as possible. Um, and just to kind of recap our last webinar, um, Helix is available at distribution as well. Uh, it's a self-contained module that we went over. If you missed that, you can find that on our YouTube channel, uh, and we would love to uh, love to talk to you more about all the products. Uh, so thanks again for joining us, everybody. Have a great rest of the week. Thanks, everybody. Okay, folks, Ryan had another appointment to attend to. We have a ton of questions coming in. Keep those coming in. We uh, have with us today uh, product manager Scott Plunkett. Scott, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Vince. I'm uh, glad, glad to be here and glad to uh, answer all these questions. I, I think the easiest thing to do would be just jump right in. Let's do it. Uh, Dave. Dave asks, do you have any external antennas such as the Laird available? What do you say, Scott? So the, a couple things. First of all, um, with the diversity antennas and with the high gain antennas that we ship in the package, um, my, my first answer would be you probably won't need it. Um, we did a, a pretty uh, complete beta with this product, and a lot of the feedback we got from, from that beta was um, uh, anecdotal evidence of, of, of this fact. Um, one was they had installed it um, in a basement in a bank. Right? So banks are pretty sturdy buildings sure. usually, and, and uh, installing these in the basement, um, that's pretty good coverage. We also had uh, some anecdotal feedback from uh, someone who... Uh, um, is was all these out out in the middle of the Smoky Mountains, um, uh -huh. and even a place where their their cell phone loss coverage, they were able to, to to pick up a signal and still had a, a solid bar um, with the, the the antennas we ship in the package. That said, we do have um, um, an extra uh, pair of antennas that, that we can offer with this. They're a little bit fatter, they're a little bit wider, they look more like uh, a little like, like uh, spatulas, okay. but but um, they give you exactly the, the the range that you need. So they're not they're not super tall or anything like that. They're just a little bit wider antenna. Um, so we do have those available as well, and those uh, should be in distribution right next to the right next to the hardware. Perfect. Okay, Dave. Hope that takes care of your question. Uh, Scott, I've got Drew asking: Will I see the keypad display when programming with a networks panel? Yes. Yeah, so the the answer is yes. Um, the easy way to answer this question um, is to uh, kind of uh, point you guys to our compatibility chart. Um, if, if you had this capability with our CDMA device, you will have the same capability with our, with our LTE device. Um, so there are um, versions of, of those panels where we, you will have the full keypad and full uh, capabilities there, and there's versions that where, where you won't, and those will remain the same. Okay, Drew, hope that takes care of you. I have a question coming in from Jawan. Jawan asks about our new Helix system. Uh, is this going to work with Helix? So that's actually a great question. Um, so the, the Helix system, um, out of the box, comes with an Ethernet port um, already built into it, so you would already have IP-only communications if you wanted it. But if you wanted to add, um, say, a, a CDMA, uh, a, a dual-path capability to the Helix, you actually add a board inside the Helix. You don't have to add an external uh, communicator. Um, so with the Helix, we do have a CDMA module uh, available, and we also have a, an LTE module coming late this year or, or probably early next year um, for the Helix system. So you don't need the bad LTE when, you, when you've when you got a Helix in, in, as your system. Now that's a great answer. Uh, you do not need it. The Helix is self-contained. Uh, Tiffany asks, can you explain the differences between your BAT CDMA and the 4G LTE. I'm not clear as to what the differences are between the two. Sure, there's a couple, couple answers to that question. First of all, the, um, the easy way to think of this is the LTE is the, the newest, latest, and greatest technology. Um, you'll, you'll see, the, the, if you look at the physical differences, obviously the LTE has got the diversity antenna, it's got a second antenna, so you're going to have better reception with, um, with, the, with the LTE device. Um, the other thing is that, that you'll find is that um, 
because LTE devices are um, inherently multi-channel, um, when you, when you um, are in one of those kind of low coverage environments um, and you're right out on the edge of the network, you'll, you'll have a better chance of, of getting coverage. So um, that would be kind of the, the, uh, the first thing I would say. The second, second thing I would say is, you know, we, we've all kind of been through the, the 2G sunset uh, fairly recently. Um, we know that from uh, Verizon, who's our, our primary carrier, we've already gotten an indication of, of uh, the CDMA sunsets not, not too far down the road. So we're pushing our entire portfolio to the, uh, to the LTE communicator. Um, you know, obviously CDMA is going to be around for a while. It's going to work for a while. Um, there are still great use cases for it. But LTE is the latest and greatest, and it's, it's the one that we're pushing um, in terms of if you, if you want to future-proof, which is kind of a part of, of what right. we like to talk about at Happy Data Tell, um, then, then we just go with the LTE device. There you go, Tiffany. Hope that takes care of you. Uh, Bob is asking about uh, compatibility with different versions of DSC panels. Uh, Scott, what do you have to say to that? So we, we've got a compatibility with a whole list of panels. I think it's eight or nine now. Um, I think the thing that I would say there is um, if, you, if you just do a Google search for IP data tell um, and uh, panel compatibility, the first item on the, on the list will be our, our compatibility chart. Um, you can download that PDF and that will show you all the capabilities. Rather than trying to, to answer your question, um, primarily because it is a matrix answer, right? Yes. So it depends on the panel, depends on the feature you're looking for. So I would just push you to that compatibility chart um, and it will answer your question within seconds. There you go, Bob. Um, uh, Satya asks about the support hours. Support hours uh, here are Monday through Friday. You can reach technical support 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Uh, and Tony is asking about security in regards to downloading. Yeah, so um, I, I the, the best way to answer this question is, is really to just kind of talk about security um, kind of in and of itself and, and how security works with our, with our devices. So um, first of all, these, these devices are not um, inherently hackable, right? So normally when you have a computer device and you, you're connecting it to, to, the, to, the, to the Internet, either by, by Ethernet or something else, um, you know, you've got in open ports, you've got um, various other ways to uh, communicate with it. Um, we're locked down several ways. We're locked down um, with respect to uh, the, the uh, communication protocols that we use. We're locked down with, with respect to um, the actual packets that we send. Um, so we're, we're an, an inherently um, secure device. If you have a specific question about a methodology or an attack vector, I'm happy to take that offline. Um, you can shoot me an email directly um, at scott.plunkett at ipdatatel.com. There you go. Uh, Barbara asks, uh, my tech told me he cannot remote into the radios. Is there an app or software that he needs? Yeah, so uh, for remoting into the radios, I would assume that the, the, the features or functionality that you'd be looking for there would be kind of some panel programming and that kind of stuff. All of that's done through the alarm dealer portal. So I would direct him to the portal and say, look, if there's a feature there that, you, that, that you're looking to, there's something there you're looking to do that we don't have, let us know and, and we'll see if we can get that, that feature uh, put together. But uh, in general, everything you, you would want to do, um, you, could be, you should be able to do either with, um, you know, we did mention that we're uh, compatible with the DSC software, with the, with the Honeywell software. Um, so th those are available as well. Okay, and Barbara asks a follow-up. Uh, does this radio work with AT&T and Verizon? So the answer there is no. So this is a Verizon-only radio. So when, when you build these radios, um, one of the things that's important is getting um, certified on the, on the network and doing uh, multiple certifications is obviously a, a, an expensive process. And for us, we looked at uh, the market, we looked at the coverage of the network, and we looked at the quality of, of, of the coverage of the network, and we decided that, um, as we had with the, in the past with our CDMA product, that Verizon was going to be the best way to go for us. There you go. Barbara, thank you for your question. Uh, Bob asks, when you are discussing Ethernet, you mean a wired cord into the router, or is it Wi-Fi also? Yes, yeah, so um, 
for for the the bad LTE product, this is a a wired Ethernet port. So just like you would plug your computer into into a, a network port, uh, this is a uh, network port like that. So uh, we do on the roadmap have a an LTE Wi-Fi product that would allow you to do a wireless connection. Um, that is uh, on the roadmap and down the road. We won't have that product out um, for at least probably another quarter. Okay. Uh, and Tony asks, does it matter what app I'm using? I know you provide IPFOB, Secure Smart, and Secure Smart Alarm. Can you discuss the differences? Absolutely. So um, that, that's a great question. Thank you for your, Tony, for your question, Tony. Um, so IPFOB is, is kind of our older generation software. Um, and if, if what you're looking for is the, the, the newer capabilities, things like um, support for Concord, um, things like a, a kind of a cleaner user interface rather than just a, a, a direct replication of, of what the um, actual uh, touch screen looks like, um, then, then you're going to want to go with the, the newer products. Um, and those are the Secure Smart Alarm and Secure Smart. Um, Secure Smart is, is our offering that allows for um, control of home automation devices as well. So if you're only just installing an alarm system, then you're going to want to go with Secure Smart Alarm. Um, in general, they support the, the same panels, so um, I, I would, that would be my suggestion. Um, that said, if you're going with the Helix, and, and the Helix is, the, is the, the panel that you're going to install, which obviously we would recommend, okay. um, then, then uh, your, your software choice is going to be Secure Smart. All right, Tony, hope that helps you out. Uh, I have another question from Tiffany. In our area, we often have varying degrees of signal strength, and this is reflected with uh, two bars. Should we expect the 4G LTE coverage to be as good as your CDMA with these dual antennas? Great question, Tiffany. Yeah, that is a great question. So um, the, the quick answer is um, I would actually expect it to be better. Yes. Um, so that's been our experience so far. We have um, several customers that were in the beta that um, literally removed a CDMA device and, and replaced it with an LTE device. Um, and we've heard two things from them. One, um, that, the, that the, the power draw is a little bit lower than what they were seeing with the CDMA device. And two, that the, the coverage was better. They had an extra bar or two. Okay, Tiffany, there you go. Um, I've got a question from Jay. Just to confirm, panels with basic signal-only compatibility, you would only be able to send signals and arm-disarm remotely. So does this mean no notifications, event logs, panel programming, et cetera? Yeah, so um, it's really just kind of a, a way of, uh, the best thing for me to do is kind of parse this question out. So, um, so notifications, event logs, and all that kind of stuff, those things will still happen. Okay. Um, it's, it's the panel programming um, and the uploads, downloads, that type of stuff that, that, um, that we, you would not have. But in terms of all of the things that you would expect of uh, does the Secure Smart app um, still function with that device, absolutely. Um, do, you, do you still have all of those capabilities, all the, the alarm capabilities? Absolutely. Okay, Jay, there you go. Uh, let's move down to Jeffrey's question. Will your, L your LTE product ever support a DSC Neo beyond the basic service level? Um, so the answer to that is I don't know. Um, so we, we have um, multiple roadmaps that, that we uh, work to. The first one is the hardware roadmap. Um, obviously, we're talking about a hardware uh, upgrade with going from the, from the uh, CDMA to the LTE. Um, on the, in terms of support, um, we today support um, alarm signals and, uh, and, and key switch on the NEO. So it will, would require some additional, uh, some additional work um, and uh, primarily at the, at the kind of firmware level. Um, so uh, the, the real answer is uh, if, we, if we see the demand in the marketplace, then, then we will go, go, look, go uh, uh, do that work. So uh, if, that's, if that's something that you're looking for, then shoot us an email and, uh, and let us know. There you go, Jeffrey. Get in touch with your account executive. Uh, let's take Herb's question. Herb says, I currently have a customer with a 3G DSC communicator. I am looking to install your BAT LTE. So I assume I will eliminate the DS, his DSC cellular device. Please confirm. Yeah, that would be, I would say that would be exactly what you would do. There you go, Herb. And I've got a question from Ezekiel regarding the Helix system. Uh, that was from last month, but let's talk a little bit of Helix since we have some time. Uh, Ezekiel asks, with the Helix system, when you add the cellular card, can you add 
the high gain antennas for low coverage environments? Um, so the, it's a tricky answer here. So when you um, add the CDMA card to a to a Helix device, um, there's an, an an SMA connector on the card that um, is dongled to an internal antenna. That's a little uh, a, a little PCB card antenna that mounts down in the corner of the device. Um, so could you do it? Yes. Um, is that a what I would call a supported configuration? Uh, probably not. Uh, it's not something that, that we have an offering for today. Um, it is absolutely something that's, that we've had a couple of discussions about, um, and it may actually may be something that, that uh, we deal with in the next iteration of the Helix. Okay, great. Uh, it looks like that is all the questions we have today. Um, oh, wait, I've got one more from Dave. Dave asks, is there any router setup such as port forwarding required with your new BAT LTE? So the quick answer there is no. So um, keep in mind that LTE is obviously communicating over the, over the Verizon LTE network, so we're not even going through the router. Um, and even if you were to uh, plug, in the Ethernet, plug into the Ethernet port, the answer would be no there as well. There you go. Dave, hope that gets you taken care of. Uh, folks, we now have a clear board. I'm going to read out contact information one more time. Please visit uh, ipdatatel.com for product information on the new BAT LTE. There you will find our product sheet, panel compatibility. You can also download technical documents like the BAT LTE manual as well as the BAT LTE quick start guide. Uh, we also have links to helpful videos to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also reach out to sales at uh, sales uh, at ipdatatel.com via email. If you are here locally in the Houston metro area, 713-452-2700, hit extension 1 for sales, extension 3 for technical support. Outside of Houston metro, 866-896-2944. Again, extension 1 for sales and extension 3 for technical support. Scott? Product Manager here with IP Datatel. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here with us. We'll catch you next month. Bye-bye.